So before I get to the optimizing proper, I would like to categorize the relevant settings first according to how drastic the visual difference is and the amount of performance you get when turning them down. Our target frame rate for this guide is the 70s FPS range and better while minimizing drops below the 70s. Uh, the reason why we're not targeting 60s is because I'm a high refresh rate gamer and values within the 60s are quite noticeable to me even when using FreeSync. Around the 70s, it's usually fluid and not distracting to my eyes. But feel free to adjust your standards accordingly when using my guide. Take note that this guide may or may not be accurate depending on your setup. But if your GPU is more or less on the same range as a 5700 XT, chances are it would also scale similarly on your end. So let's get into it. Tier 1 is my most recommended settings group, and you only need to change a couple of settings. First, set your preset settings to very high, and then turn down cloud and fog quality to medium. That's it, you're good to go. Why this is my most prioritized setting is because the difference between medium and high is the most minuscule out of all the graphics options in terms of overall general gameplay. When you're just playing the game properly without having to deliberately look for volumetric lights or looking up in the sky for clouds as if you're digital foundry, there's virtually no difference in image quality and yet the performance gain is substantial, around 4 or more FPS. Take a look at this example. However, there's a noticeable difference on God rays, just like this one. There's a bit of graininess and pixelation happening within the edges of the ray effect, but these moments are very rare and only occur in selected scenes, which also don't last very long. What you always see generally is fog in front of you and clouds above you both of which have close to zero difference when moving to medium from high, that's why it's okay to turn this down to medium and leave everything on their maximum values. If you're still looking for more FPS gain, let's move ahead to tier 2. Using the same very high preset and the medium fog quality, let's adjust geometric quality down to high from very high. The difference isn't massive but there's a noticeable one. Turning down to medium reduces LOD for foliage, objects, and environmental props as well as their overall density and complexity, and this also means more pronounced pop-in. But if you're not bothered by that, you can have geometric quality on high and still enjoy a good looking game with an additional 4 or more FPS boost. Sometimes the differences are just there and noticeable when you're switching between graphic settings from the menu. But when you're playing the game and enjoying it for what it is, turning down very high to high would just be an afterthought. Lastly, if you still want more FPS, we have tier 3. Now this is the last one because I don't recommend this for people who want the best graphical fidelity that justifies playing the game on PC. And this has something to do with the lighting quality. Huge disclaimer, this setting gives the biggest performance gain out of all the graphics options. However, from the comparison that you're looking right now, the removal of accurate ambient occlusion in environmental objects and grass takes a lot of atmosphere away from the look of the game. Ambient shadows under tables and around objects are now gone when moving down to high. Compared to very high, there's accuracy in the way indirect lighting is handled on those objects which are sadly diminished in high. So if you're already beyond the 70 FPS mark using the first two tier settings, just stay there and enjoy the game. But if you're still having FPS drops, then you've got no choice but to move down the lighting quality setting to high. Just don't do any more than that, it's just vastly inferior 
and you're better off playing on a console. So those are the three settings that you must adjust for a reasonable compromise between visuals and performance. All the rest just don't bother since they have no significant performance gain and are just too good looking to be turned down in the first place. Take a look at Shadows for example. This scene I only get a single FPS gain, but the difference between image quality in terms of scene shadows is humongous. So just limit your experimentation and tinkering of those graphic settings to those first three settings. Again, these are cloud and fog quality, geometric quality, and lighting quality. But for the latter, I still strongly suggest leaving that on very high. So that's it for me. I'm now going to leave you with a short gameplay clip using my optimized settings. I'm now way beyond the 70 FPS range and actually more into the 80s, which helps a lot in the overall fluidity of controls. Take note that this recording still takes about 3 to 4 FPS away from my actual real world performance. Comment down below if you have any more questions and also feel free to correct me of any misinformation. Thanks guys and I hope this little guide helps you out. Bye bye.